Hello everyone and welcome to Around the ICC. I'm your host, Matteo Bonetti, here to take you through the final week of the European season and go through all of the most dramatic storylines, title winners, Champions League finishing places, and everything else that I found interesting. I'll also give you my best Premier League 11 for the season in what was another very entertaining campaign in England. Here we go with a whip round of the final round in Europe and let's start with the Premier League where Pep Guardiola added another trophy to his resume by guiding Manchester City to an emphatic Premier League win. City not only were a force to be reckoned with going forward but defensively they were better than ever under Pep Guardiola with the addition of Ruben Dias who became the best center back in the league making a massive difference in that solidity. They showed that despite having some key injuries like the one to Kevin De Bruyne, that others could step up and raise their game, which is exactly what Ilkay Gundogan did when given the chance. Aside from the champions, a dramatic race for the Champions League spots ensued with Leicester City giving up a top four spot on the last day of the season after losing 4-2 against Tottenham. This means that Manchester United, Chelsea and Liverpool round out the final four alongside Manchester City. Serie A saw a different league champion other than Juventus for the first time in a decade. Inter's incredible run in 2021 meant that they won their first Scudetto since Jose Mourinho's treble winning season. Antonio Conte's defensive counter-attacking style was devastating with players like Romelu Lukaku oftentimes looking unstoppable. The biggest surprise of the league though came with Juve who had won 9 straight league titles but went into the final round of the season in fifth place, not knowing if they'd be able to qualify for Champions League. In the end though, they got the job done, and without Cristiano Ronaldo, who was benched by the way for technical reasons by Andrea Pirlo, Juve easily won against Bologna, but they also needed results to go the other way, or to go their way in other games, and fortunately for Juve, they did. Although Milan won and secured their first Champions League spot in seven seasons, Napoli only managed a 1-1 draw against Elas Verona, side with nothing left to play for, meaning that Juve, Milan, join Atalanta and Inter in Europe's most prestigious tournament next season. In the Bundesliga, Bayern Munich continued their domestic dynasty by winning the league yet again. And while Robert Lewandowski shattered Gerd Müller's single season record by scoring 41 goals plus in a season, the other great news was for fans of the yellow wall. Hurling Haaland and his 27 goals helped guide Borussia Dortmund to secure a top four spot, finishing the season strong with seven straight league victories. Over in France and the title race went down to the final day between Lille and Giants PSG. And it was yet another shocker in Europe as Lille finished the season one point ahead of PSG, losing three league on matches all season long and conceding a league low 23 goals, the best defensive record in the league. That's a massive disappointment for Paris Saint-Germain who were knocked out of the Champions League and were not able to pick up the league trophy under Mauricio Pochettino, and when you look at the money that they've spent, the superstars that they have, you can see why it is a massive, massive disappointment for them to finish second below Lille. There was no greater title drama though in the top five European leagues than what we saw in La Liga. On the final day of the season, both the Madrid-based sides were going at it for the title, and it came down to Atletico Madrid, whose destiny was in their hands, picking up all three points to make sure that there wouldn't be a Real Madrid surprise in the final minutes. Zidane's men won their game 2-1 against a tough opposition in Villarreal, but ultimately it would only be good for second place as Atletico Madrid found a comeback win to secure their second La Liga trophy under Diego Simeone. Atleti went down by a goal to nail in the 18th minute, but an equalizer from Angel Correa and then the go-ahead winner from Luis Suarez was the difference. After the game, you could see an emotional Suarez showing just what a massive moment this was for him personally and for his team. He was seen as surplus to requirements at Barcelona. The prolific Uruguayan striker showed that he's nowhere near being done this season, scoring 21 goals in the league, including the biggest goal of all, the one that meant the trophy 
for Atleti. Barcelona and Sevilla round off the other two teams who finished in the top four while we say goodbye to Eibar, Real Valladolid and Huesca who were relegated to the Segunda División. All in all, a fantastic season of football in Spain with a three-horse race for the title becoming the main storyline in 2021, giving us plenty to talk about and plenty of drama. And Diego Simeone giving a clear message to the Giants, Real Madrid and Barcelona that plenty of work will need to be done over the summer to keep up with Atleti. And now for the best Premier League 11 of the season, a list that's full of young players that should go on to become superstars for years to come. In goal, I'm gonna go with a more hipster pick. Emi Martinez of Aston Villa has been one of the best players this season for his club, often making heroic saves, keeping over 15 clean sheets. And now for my defensive line, right back, it's the do-everything Joao Cancelo who showed his versatility and fit in beautifully with Pep's style of play. Alongside him, his teammate Ruben Diaz, the Premier League player of the season, an absolute wall at the back. Alongside him, another youngster. You're going to see a theme here. Wesley Fofana of Leicester, who showed plenty of composure at the back and also cost Leicester a lot of money, but he's worth every single uh, pence, I guess you could say, as we've seen with his season. Let's round out the back four, though, and it is Luke Shaw, who is one of the more consistent parts of United's eleven. On to the midfield, and it's West Ham's Thomas Suchek, who some people thought was the bargain of last summer. Goal-scoring midfielder, also a warrior. Love everything about Suchek, the way he gets forward, the hammer of the right foot that he has. Next to him, it's the City pair of Ilkay Gundogan and Kevin De Bruyne. Now, De Bruyne remains one of the best midfielders in the world, but Gundogan did an amazing job filling in for injured players and showing his worth scoring a career-high 13 goals on the season. The other midfield magician though is Bruno Fernandes and his 18 goals links this unit with my forward line consisting of top scorers Harry Kane and Mo Salah. Even though Liverpool didn't have their best season, Harry Kane and Salah still got a great goal tally, both going over 20 goals on the Premier League season. And just a reminder, Teams like the Portland Thorns, Houston Dash, Olympic Lyon, and FC Barcelona all coming to the Women's International Champions Cup in the summer of 2021. So excited to see some of the best women in action this summer. And you can find out all the info on both the ICC and WICC social media handles for much more information. Anyway, thanks as always for joining us here on Around the ICC. I'm Matteo Bonetti. You can follow me at Bonetti on Twitter. Follow the ICC as well at INT Champions Cup on Twitter and at International Champions Cup on both Facebook and Instagram. Check out the website, www.internationalchampionscup.com for a lot of cool features. <laughs>